politicizing our humanity. You see, uh, Nigeria today has become a den of unknown gunmen. And I, I say that because for every new report you see now, any news, anything, you see unknown gunmen uh, kills 20, unknown gunmen kidnaps 50. So any small thing is unknown gunmen. And um, the level of insecurity in the country today has risen. You know? So today we no longer ask whether our lives are, uh, and properties are secured. We only ask who is next to be killed or kidnapped. You know, uh, we check and we see, okay, whose family is next? Who is going to, who is going to, which family is going to be thrown into mourning? So right now, Nigerians are only waiting and we're waiting and saying, whose turn is it going to be? The level of insecurity in the country has become extremely worrisome. Uh, the, 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 the lapses created by, by government, by the inaction, of government, you know, government had the opportunity to nip this this uh, insecurity in the board. You know, it was it, when it, it when it started. You know, it started like play, play, play. It it wasn't this bad. It wasn't this bad. But now, um, because of government's inaction, we we now we, we are we are caught up, and it seems as if there's nothing that we can do about it again. So now um, it is even worse. It is worse that we as citizens are not making enough noise about the right things. Uh, we are concerned about some other things. So despite the worrisome state of our dear nation, the plague of uh, uh, um, politicizing every, any little thing, you know, we are quick to say, ah, now nah, this party, they run ammo. Now nah, this party, they do ammo. It's because of this party. And so, um, right now, it's, we are, we are tri trivializing the, 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 the problems and the challenges that we are facing as a na nation. You know, so there are talks all over social media claiming that the violence and actions leading to the high level of insecurity, um, which now threatens our very existence, are sponsored. Members of the ruling uh, and opposition parties have thrown all caution to the wind and they exchange blames. It is this party, it is that party, rather than just actually recognizing terrorism for what terror terrorism is and taking actions to stop the incidents and killings and kidnappings, which, uh, which is threatening the very existence of Nigerians. We must stand united or fall divided. We must stand united. Then Nigeria is at the very brink. We are at the very brink of war. You know, and I don't think we are saying this enough. I think everyone is just looking at, okay, maybe because the thing never touched me, uh, make we just they look at and everyone is just is just playing with the situation. The situation has become so dire and would worsen if we do not join voices and actions and implore the government to take decisive actions to protect the lives and properties of the people. We must educate and reorientate ourselves. We must advocate for peace and tolerance. Um, negative and um, irresponsible tribal comments. You know, it would it would it has no other thing to do than to incite violence. So it 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 breeds this intolerance that we have for ourselves. And this tribe will say, ah, now nah, these people, no, be these people. If these people come out, we will get peace and all of those things. And then we wonder why some people are killing and another tribe, and why another tribe is killing another tribe. So I, I feel we must um, be able to um, and preach peace and preach unity. You know, if at all we want to see the end of this um, insurrection, um, we. Okay, I, I, I have always said this, and I think this is, the, this is time to say it again, in terms of, if we're talking about security, I think the time for decentralization is now. The power that the federal government wields, in, 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 as far as security is concerned, is too much. And it would seem that even that power now is overwhelming, so, such that they don't even know what to do with the power again. Assign state governments with the task of security responsibilities. Yes, at federal government level, there are some powers that you cannot just take away. But let's, let's the security apparatus, 
in uh, the police, um, security operatives that you have, let them be responsible to state governments. Let state governments take charge. Let them take charge. A governor of a particular state will not be looking at while his state is burning and the governor is crying to federal government to come and help. So, so what then is the duty and what then is the work of the state government? You know, um, we had mentioned earlier, so, but I'm, I'm just going to chip in again, that religious leaders have a role to play. You find religious leaders being totally irresponsible and reckless with the comments that they make. Knowing fully well the power that you wield as a religious leader, knowing fully well the hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people that listen to you and take your word as law, you, you need to be very careful. You need to be cautious of how you urge people on. Because comments that you make in ways incite violence against maybe, perhaps other religions. And then you have this religion attacking this religion. Oh, they attacked us first. Oh, they attacked us first. So I think it is, now is the time for, this, uh, for our religious leaders to come together and preach peace. And tolerance is very important. So... Uh, once again, I would, I would say I am conclusively that I think we need, the, the, there's never been a time to call for peace and to call for um, tolerance um, and to call for unity as now, using our voices, using our platforms to advocate for peace. Because at the end of the day, like I said, it's just turning and turning and turning. And Nigerians are just looking at who is the next person to fall victim. Jebo, brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. But I'm still going to ask for account number. <laughs> but very brilliant. Very, very brilliant. And I think one of the core problems that Nigeria didn't look at is let's go back to the beginning. Sometime in 2008 or 2009, Nigeria was warned. I was within government apparatus then. Mm. And Nigeria was warned that the fights and the instability going on in sub Saharan Africa was going to affect Nigeria. Mm. Government was also warned that the deforestation of the upper north, mm -hmm. Zamfara, Borno, Katsina, was going to affect, because na man naturally moves towards water, mm. was going to affect and put pressure on the middle belt. This was 2008, 2009. Mm. Nothing was done. This is how many years later? Say 12 years later. We are paying the prices of mm. not listening so to history. what should have done. There's influx of a lot of people, I would also say, because of political advantages, we brought some of them mm. in. Mm. We are paying the price yeah. for that now. Yeah. Nobody wants to say this. Mm. And whether we like it or not, I'm bold enough to say, we're also hearing from some reports between communal clashes, between intra-Nigerian local governments within yes. a state. Yes. We borrowed yes. fighters from yes. Chad and Niger to use against our own brothers within the local government. Guess what? They never went back. And now it's, it's and now backfired. The whole melting pot is in Nigeria. We can't handle things. We can't do anything. We must also add the complacency of our security forces. Mm. In How do you expect 400,000 400, policemen, about, sorry, there are about 510,000 policemen right now, 510,000 policemen to police 200 million 200 people. Million people. And of which uh, half now, now with VIP. Yeah. That's exactly what I was exactly. going to say. So, so <laughs> and you stipulates one to 10 at least policemen. No, and no, we are 200 no, million possible. people. 250,000 about policing 200. It's not possible. I think, you know, this issue of security is something that we really need to, you know, Debo said something earlier. We are not really making so much noise about the right things. Yes. You know, we are, we are majoring so much on minor yes. issues, and then the major issues, we, we, are not even we are not even minoring on them, we're just not talking about them. And this issue of security, I think it has to be the number one, the major, you know, uh, priority of any government. Because yes. at the end of the day, it's only someone who is alive that can actually fulfill purpose, that can do a lot of things. Look at what's happening right now. Before, um, uh, but they both said something that is very, very critical. You know, we have this culture, if it is not happening to you, you no, just say concern, it is happening yeah, to yeah. them. Before now, everybody was thinking that this was about the north. Yes. It was about northeast. Yes. It's in uh, Meduguri. Yeah. It's very far. I can't go there. What, mm. Nothing is taking me there. And gradually, it started coming down. 
and we could see it's <laughs> just here in Benue. Mm -hmm. Somebody was like, okay, Benue, it is not <laughs> are here. You, are you negating that. the actions in Ekiti and uh, so, no, no, it's already no, no. here? So I'm it's just saying here. that <laughs> gradually it started coming down, yeah. and right yeah. now, even Southeast, it's not even, uh, you can't even spare. The other day, we heard that a sitting governor, a sitting governor's house was burnt. Yes. Now, I asked myself a question. If a sitting governor, now, this is the chief security officer of a state. Of state. If his house could be burnt, who is safe? Who exactly is safe? If the number one man who is supposed to secure the lives of millions of other persons, mm -hmm. he cannot even secure himself. So what are we even talking about? I think we really need to come out and start really decentralizing this security. Mm. Because uh, if we have a situation where everybody in a community knows everybody, if a stranger gets into a community, everybody knows that this person is not one of us. And they also know what everybody does. Mm. Once you start going out, I mean, you can't be a palm wine tapper and then all of a sudden, when certain activity starts happening around, they quickly understand that this is not part of our culture. And they can either call it to bear. And if they also go down to this uh, decentralizing security, what also happens is that the laws and the rules and regulation of that particular community will be reinforced. So it's like, uh, in my place, there, there was a time that there was this rule that when people commit offense, they bring them out in the public and they flock them. Mm. Now, you cannot wait for somebody in Abuja to come and flog somebody who committed <laughs> an offense in my community. Because before you even know, uh, you, you even say Jack, the person has already been punished. Mm. And when he's punished outrightly, it sends a message to everyone that see, Nobody is exempted mm -hmm. from this. Because mm -hmm. that's also another thing. In Nigeria, I strongly believe that there are no consequences for actions. For actions, yes. There are no consequences for actions. And mm -hmm. because there are no consequences for actions, nobody has been made a scapegoat. Mm -hmm. Things will continue to recycle around. Even mm -hmm. right there in the, in the security system. Mm -hmm. People are not, okay, look at all the whole thing that everybody's on. Nobody is sacked. Nobody is sanctioned. Mm -hmm. Nothing is happening. Things just happen but like that. But you know, that. I'd like to add this here. I remember when the president was summoned to come out to come and visit the House of Rep. And the Attorney General, Malami, said the House of Rep, based on the immunity of the President, cannot summon the... Of course, there's also, within the Constitution, you won't find the President, too, should brush his teeth at 8 o'clock. But, <laughs> but in the Act creating the National Assembly, he states that the National Assembly can summon any Nigerian. There's no limitation yeah. on that clause any Nigerian. Mm. So except they are trying to say it's the bill of Sudan, uh, Sudan which mm. we know is not true, mm. as long as it's a bona fide Nigerian <laughs> citizen, whether you are in diaspora mm. or in Nigeria, yeah. the, the National mm. Assembly can, can summon you. you. I would like to add also that I'm, I've never been keen with state police, and here's the reason why before you guys should be. Mm. The powers that the Constitution grants governors is too high. Mm. I feel a simpler way is even going lower, LG police. If we had local government police, mm -hmm. it would be so simple. Mm -hmm. And we had local government police mm -hmm. that were indigenous to that community. Mm -hmm. If you if you watch we watch movies mm -hmm. now in America, you see sheriffs. Yeah. Sheriffs are local and they are usually boys that grow up in the community. The community. They know everybody. They know, they know, they know you can't yeah. if you take a TV, a sheriff knows who did it. Mm -hmm. yes. You don't he doesn't need to ask. Yes. So if we are ready to police in that manner, bringing it down to the local government, which is the basic flat line, yeah. not just state, mm. the basic flat line. I think we might be able to solve a lot I of our problems. I think we should even do one first. You know, we, I think we should do one first. It has come to a point where governors are crying. It's not <laughs> over <laughs> governors are coming out and they are crying that we don't, that we, are, we are helpless. Yeah. Help us. So, I want to buttress on, um, on his point again, where he mentioned um, that there are zero consequences for actions. True. And that is, it is one of the things fighting with us in this country. Look at when, the, you know, this thing started like play like play, especially the kidnappings. It started, it started and then, yeah, and then all of us were saying, ah, they kidnapped this. Great. Now look at it today. Almost every day now, mm -hmm. someone is being kidnapped. Mm -hmm. if, even now, is resulting into death. Yeah. They kidnap you, they kill uh, a no, number. But, but now, kidnappers are even getting cheaper. My friend was telling me that off Buari, which is about when you're entering Abuja, they can kidnap you for just 10,000. Wow. Oh. Just money to then, drink. Then, then you, they, it's a, so so money when we were shouting that the government should do something, should do something, uh, it looked as if some people were troublesome, but they were not able to arrest that situation. You know, now, you know the government, as usual, they will hide behind 
is PDP of 16 years <laughs> to dodge a no, question. Now, no, now, recently they said, no, they said it, is, it is that we are suffering from uh, consequences of 1972 so, or something. It's no longer uh, 1992. That is no longer, so it's the era of uh, that, Mo that, that Alamo, That I is think. what happens when you bring Bitamax politicians into a 4D world. Mm. If you use Bitamax videos, you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it at that. Uh, so, um... Yeah, so, well, I wish we, we, we had the old day, you know, to continue to talk about And like we were saying earlier, the situation in the country, the challenges that we face, we'll go continue to the talk, the talk, the talk, we know if we finish up, uh, you know. But I won't say we should pray. We don't need pray since. Uh, so now it's time to take action. We must, we must not get tired, you know, of using every means available to us um, to advocate for good governance. It's the least that we deserve. Um, so, guys, please follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag Advocate NG. Uh, to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to Plus TV Africa.com slash The Advocate NG. We'll go on a quick break and we'll be right back.